Remember, folks, a championship begins with ownership. Great fans of Los Angeles, their first Super Bowl trophy in Rams House. As we inch closer to the 2022 season, it's time for us to revisit all 32 NFL owners as we rank them each from worst to first. Number 32, Dan Snyder, Washington Commanders. Come on now, are you honestly surprised? Snyder is the epitome of horrible NFL ownership. He has no respect for his players, his fans, or the league itself. The amount of scandals involving this team under his ownership are sickening, and it is unbelievable that the NFL still puts up with him. Number 31, Shad Khan, Jacksonville Jaguars. Unlike Snyder, Khan at least wants to win. You gotta credit him for constantly opening up his checkbook in free agency, even if the Jaguars' expensive signings never really pan out. But as the team's main decision maker, Khan really doesn't have the best track record. He was way too patient with Doug Marone and David Caldwell, and bringing Urban Meyer aboard last season turned out to be a colossal mistake. Number 30, Woody and Christopher Johnson, New York Jets. I mean, just look at how horrible the Jets have been for a decade plus. They constantly recycle through coaches, GMs, and quarterbacks. And that all starts with the Johnsons, who honestly don't seem to care about winning as long as Jets fans keep giving them money. Number 29, McNair family, Houston Texans. Remember when the McNair family gave Bill O'Brien all the power so that he could trade away Jadavian Clowney and DeAndre Hopkins, ruin team morale, and prompt J.J. Watt and Deshaun Watson to demand trades? Yeah, that falls on the McNairs for giving O'Brien way too much control. Number 28, Jimmy Haslam, Cleveland Browns. The Browns have had seven coaches under Haslam since he took ownership in 2012. In 2016, his team went 1-15. In 2017, they went 0-16. They alienated Baker Mayfield and happily took on some massive PR backlash by trading for Deshaun Watson. It has been non-stop drama with this Browns team since Haslam entered the picture, which is precisely what you don't want from your ownership group. Number 27, Rob Walton, Denver Broncos. It's gonna take a while until we get an idea on how the Waltons handle ownership duties. We can't place them too high, but they're already better than the five worst owners in the league. Number 26, David Tepper, Carolina Panthers. Like Shad Khan, you gotta respect Tepper for trying. I mean, he's always willing to spend money. It's just the results haven't really been there yet. Now, granted, Tepper has only been the owner since 2018, whereas most of the owners below him have been running a clown show for quite a while now. Number 25, Stephen Ross, Miami Dolphins. Ross took over as the full owner in 2009, and the results haven't exactly been pretty. Miami has only made the postseason once under Ross. He baffled many by firing head coach Brian Flores in 2022, even though the latter led Miami to consecutive winning seasons. Number 24, Sheila Ford Hamp, Detroit Lions. In 2020, Martha Firestone Ford stepped down as owner and handed the duties over to daughter Sheila Ford Hamp. Now, you gotta credit Hamp for ending the disastrous Matt Patricia Bob Quinn era in 2020 and for having the Lions kickstart a full on rebuild in 2021. The Lions are gonna need to start winning for Hamp to actually move up further on our rankings. Number 23, McCaskey Family, Chicago Bears. Virginia Hallis McCaskey is the owner of the Bears. Her son, George McCaskey, is the team chairman whom the front office folks report to. McCaskies are legendary in Chicago, but the football team hasn't exactly given the Windy City faithful much to cheer about in recent years. George has consistently made the wrong choices when it comes to front office executives, who in turn hire the wrong coaches. Two playoff berths and no postseason wins since 2011 speaks for itself. Number 22, John Mara and Steve Tisch, New York Giants. It's weird putting Mara and Tisch this low, considering that the Giants have won two Super Bowls under their ownership, but the G-Men have also been one of America's saddest franchises for a decade and counting now. Mara and Tisch kept Tom Coughlin for way too long. Ben McAdoo, Pat Shermer, and Joe Judge didn't cut it as coaches, and how on earth they employed Dave Gettleman as GM for four years is beyond us. If it weren't for those Super Bowl titles from over a decade ago, they'd probably be bottom three on this list. Number 21, Dean Spanos, Los Angeles Chargers. I'm sure Bolts fans in San Diego would probably love to see Spanos lower on this list, but in terms of putting up a solid product on the field, Spanos hasn't been all that bad. By all accounts, he stays out of GM Tom Telesco's way and lets the man do his job. And the Chargers have constructed one of the best rosters in the league because of that. 
Number 20. Michael Bidwell, Arizona Cardinals The younger Bidwell inherited the team following the passing of his father Bill in 2019. Under Michael, the Redbirds have enjoyed a gradual return to relevance. Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins have done wonders in Cliff Kingsbury's offense, and the Cards have been a must-watch team since 2020. And, to the credit of Bidwell, he certainly isn't cheap when it comes to paying big-time players what they're worth. Number 19. Mark Davis, Las Vegas Raiders Davis's tenure as the Raiders owner has been up and down since he inherited the team from his father, Al, in 2011. The $100 million contract he handed John Gruden was a huge disaster. But Davis and the Raiders overcame a lot of adversity in 2021 to make their first playoff trip since 2016. Also, Davis has usually taken care of his star players, paying big bucks for guys like Derek Carr, Devontae Adams, and Max Crosby. That is a sign of an owner who wants to win. Number 18, Arthur Blank, Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons have been mediocre since 2018, and Blank being too patient with Thomas Dimitrov and Dan Quinn is a big reason why. But the Falcons have mostly avoided the NFL's basement under Blank's ownership. Number 17, Mike Brown, Cincinnati Bengals. Brown isn't the most popular owner among Bengals fans, but come on, the dude deserves to move up after seeing his team come oh so close to a Super Bowl championship. Brown was very cheap during the Andy Dalton, AJ Green days, but he's at least been willing to spend more money over the last two years. Number 16, Ziggy Wilf, Minnesota Vikings. Now, the Vikings haven't won a Super Bowl under Wilf's ownership, but since he took over in 2005, they've mostly been a competitive team and certainly have had a couple of cracks at the Lombardi Trophy. Wilf does what the average owner needs to do. He is hands-off and he opens up his wallet when it's time to pay his top players. He certainly isn't the problem in many. Number 15, Jerry Jones, Dallas Cowboys. The most popular owner in the NFL may also be the most difficult one to rank, because you either love him or you hate him. Jones's main problem was being way too loyal to Jason Garrett. He finally moved on and hired a Super Bowl winning head coach in Mike McCarthy, and the Cowboys are among the NFL's most talented teams every year. At some point, the players need to stop underperforming in the postseason and actually do something. At least his Cowboys are always in the playoff mix. Number 14, Jody Allen, Seattle Seahawks. Jody Allen inherited the team following the passing of her brother Paul in 2018. There has been plenty of speculation about her potentially selling the team, but nothing significant has developed on that front. Allen allows Pete Carroll and John Schneider to run the show. She almost never gets involved in personnel decisions and probably did the right thing in giving the green light on a Russell Wilson trade. Number 13, Amy Adams Strunk, Tennessee Titans. You don't really hear much from Strunk, which again, is a good thing. She is happy to watch from the owner's box while GM John Robinson and head coach Mike Vrabel build a Super Bowl contender on the field. Number 12, Terry and Kim Pagula, Buffalo Bills. The first few years under the Pagula family's ownership weren't exactly great, but the franchise has turned a corner under a new GM, Brandon Bean, head coach Sean McDermott, and quarterback Josh Allen. Number 11, Gail Benson, New Orleans Saints. Benson is another one of those owners that prefers to stay out of the spotlight. The Saints built a winning foundation under GM Mickey Loomis and former head coach Sean Payton, and Benson understands the responsibilities. You never hear stories of her interrupting the duties of Loomis or the coaches, and when has she ever been shy about spending money. Number 10, Glazer Family, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Glazers were once viewed as some of the worst owners in all of sports. But I mean, a Super Bowl 55 championship followed by an NFC South title and a trip to the divisional round of the playoffs? Yeah, hard to complain about that. Number 9, Jim Irsay, Indianapolis Colts. Why do the Colts always have a top-of-the-line management, and why are they always playoff contenders? Well, it's largely thanks to Jim Irsay. He has proven to be a top-10 owner even without Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck leading the franchise. Number 8. Jeffrey Lurie, Philadelphia Eagles The Eagles have almost always been a playoff contender under Lurie. Without this man, they do not win Super Bowl 52, their first in franchise history. And remember when Lurie was heavily criticized for the handling of Doug Peterson's firing and Carson Wentz's departure? Well, I think we'd say things turned out pretty well for Philly in the end. Howie Roseman is a polarizing figure in Philadelphia, but Lurie's great faith in him has made this team a winner. Number 7. York Family, San Francisco 49ers 
Denise DePartolo York and John York are the co-chairs of the 49ers, and Jed York is the team CEO. Though the younger York poorly managed John Harbaugh's exit following the 2014 season, you gotta give credit where it's due. York has handpicked the right people to run the team. Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch are one of the best coach GM duos in the league today, and it's why the 49ers are set up for long-term success. Number 6. Stan Kroenke, Los Angeles Rams What a year 2022 was for Kroenke. Four and a half months after his Rams won the Super Bowl, Kroenke's Colorado Avalanche won the Stanley Cup. Kroenke is not afraid to shell out the money when less need and Sean McVay need it. Lo and behold, the Rams are a model organization once again. Number 5. Steve Bishotti, Baltimore Ravens Bishotti has been the Ravens' sole owner since 2004. They've only endured four losing seasons during his reign. They've reached three AFC Championship games and won Super Bowl 47. No doubt that the Ravens have a bona fide winner in their ownership chair at the moment. Number 4. Clark Hunt, Kansas City Chiefs the Chiefs are the new class of the AFC. Hunt's hiring of Andy Reid and old GM John Dorsey did wonders for the franchise. Hunt stays out of Reid's way and lets the man do his work with Brett Veach. And Hunt is always spending top dollar when the time comes for it. Hence why the Chiefs are an annual Super Bowl contender. Number 3. Green Bay Packers Incorporated. Green Bay Packers. The NFL's only publicly owned team is also one of the best run organizations in all the sports. The Packers have been a Super Bowl contender for the better part of the last 30 years. Packers chairman Mark Murphy knows how to build a winner, and he gets extra points for convincing Aaron Rodgers to finish his career in Lambeau following a very rocky offseason. Number 2. Rooney Family, Pittsburgh Steelers. The Rooney family has set the golden standard for sports team ownership. The franchise has only had three head coaches dating back to 1969, and they haven't had a losing record since the 2003 season. Number 1. Robert Kraft, New England Patriots How many other owners have six Super Bowl rings again? Yeah, Kraft is the best owner in North American sports right now. His job since 2000 has been to let Bill Belichick call the shots. And Kraft has been rewarded with nine AFC Championship banners and six championship rings. You can't beat that, folks. But who do you think is the best NFL owner? Let us know in the comments section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>